Yeah, no, I, look, I'm sorry about the delay. Look, I'll get it sorted. It's fine. You can, no, you can trust me. It's complete. Yeah. Yeah, I love you too. Okay, bye. Oh, hello, spicy people of the internet. Spice 8 Rack here, aka the sole survivor of an explosion at the Sexy Factory. And have you ever been playing a card game that you love and encountered a problem so glaring that you've had no choice but to make a video about it? Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I love to delve into the seldom seen and seldom discussed aspects of Magic the Gathering, be it flavor text or draft chaff or flimsy excuses to hang out with my friends on camera. I just, oh, oh, I, I love having a little look at these little morsels I do. But there is one aspect of this game that I've seen very few people actually talk about, and that is counters. And it wasn't until I saw this wonderful video by fellow British YouTuber Max Makes Magic that I had my interest truly peaked in the subject. And now, the Counters of Magic, brought to you by Max Diamond. If you ceiling fate, bribery, currency, loyalty, arrow infection and flood, depletion, vitality, voyage, velocity, further phylactery, blood, intervention, experience, manifestation, devotion, elixir and slight, isolation, divinity, paralyzation, and hourglass echo pin night. I think most magic players view counters as simply a means to an end, just a, a way of keeping track of the maths of the game. Like, we remove counters off of dark depths to hasten the arrival of Marit Lage, and we add counters to Animar Soul of the Elements to demonstrate exactly to what degree we are about to ruin the day of the person who's playing Taysa Karlov. There are over 140 unique counters throughout Magic's history, and some of them are just delightful. Uh, Eryx Mathies wakes up once you've removed all of his slumber counters, and Hoofprint of the Stag is the only card in the entire game to use Hoofprint counters. I particularly like this one uh, because Magic Online tends to use specific icons to denote whenever a specific counter is being put or removed from a card, and this is the one that they use for hoofprint. Have you ever seen a hoof before? <laughs> I love how varied and granular some of these counters are. They are delightful and flavorful. But despite this, this buffet of variety, Magic still has one generic counter which continues to crop up time and time again. And that is the charge counter. Who's playing that music? Oftentimes, charge counters make sense on cards, like the mana battery cycle, where charge counters were originally introduced into this game. However, Oftentimes, their inclusion just feels like a waste. Let's have a look at a card like Angel Heart Vial, for example. Now, this card gains a charge counter each time you're dealt damage. Mechanically, fine. But what story do charge counters tell? The answer is not really much of anything. There are infinitely more interesting, flavorful, and suitable counters that we could put on this card. The first one that jumps to mind is, of course, healing counters, right? But if we delve a little bit deeper into this card and examine its story, and more specifically its flavor text, we can see that it suggests that Iona herself, a very powerful angel from the plane of Zendikar, is intervening in this character's preservation. You don't want to know what's in the vial. But it is calm. As such, rather than replacing this card's charge counters with healing counters, we could instead replace them with intervention counters, carrying the story and flavour of this card through its mechanics in a much more fitting way. And whilst we're on the subject, we can replace Ventrifact Bottle's charge counters with intervention counters as well. Because I don't know what's going on with this art, but an intervention is definitely what Ron Spencer needs. Now, you might be wondering, Spice, are you really going to spend this entire video recategorizing 
all of Magic the Gathering's charge counter cards. There are loads of them, and this really doesn't seem like that much of an issue at all. So come with me now, as we put some enlightened counters in your brain, and fix Magic the Gathering's charge counter problem. Okay, so here is a list of all of the cards in Magic the Gathering that use charge counters or have charge counters on them. Uh, and I'm going to try and recategorize as many of them as I can, giving them much more flavorful, much more fitting counters. And frankly, some of these are no-brainers. For example... Ice counters should obviously be placed on any future reprint of cards like Tendo Ice Bridge and Ice Cauldron. Uh, the Humble Egg Counter would be a, a delightful, flavorful cherry on top of the Orochi Hatchery. And Kairan Toy would be the perfect home for these seldom used mannequin counters. Although, I would, I would also say it does look like the demon who sits on my chest at night and screams at me whilst I'm unable to move, so I would accept paralysis counters on that one as well. And we can even go further. Let's have a look at a card like Astral Cornucopia. Now, if we actually look at the definition of Cornucopia, it is a symbol of plenty consisting of a goat's horn overflowing with fruit, flowers, and corn. Now, if that isn't a bounty, I don't know what is. <laughs> but it's not just about matching words to visuals. There is a mechanical component to this as well. Depletion counters, for example, have been left in the dust of magic's progression. They used to be mechanical shorthand that designers would use to go on cards that had a limited number of effects, be them lands or spells, before they then disappeared for good. And when a perfect cycle of lands, the vivid lands from Lorwyn, came around, they weren't given depletion counters, but instead lumped with charge counters. Boring, dull, vapid, never looks at me during. The same could be said for storage counters. Here we have a counter that still sees some printing, which is mechanical shorthand for a card which stores mana on it, and yet we have cards like Mana Cache and Druid's Repository that do exactly that, but are lumped with charge counters. Give them storage counters, wizards! I was going to say the same for Mana Bloom as well, uh, but Magic also has a fungus counter, and this is a lovely little mushroom, so I think it should have a fungus counter. I'm very serious with my analysis. Changing charge counters to different kinds of markers could also be an educational tool. I remember first learning about the definition of the word Sylvan from the card Sylvan Carieted, which served me amazingly during my English Literature A-levels where I had to analyse the difference between the pastoral and the industrial in Tess of the Herbervilles. Shout out to Miss Bolding, by the way. I hope you are enjoying watching the fruits of your education as you chain smoke in the alleyway behind the gates of heaven. I have no idea if she's dead or not, but it would surprise me if she's still alive. <laughs> there are quite a few counters in Magic which share their name with uncommonly encountered words, like Aegis and Phylactery, which I swear isn't a sex thing. Aegis, for example, means the protection or backing of a certain person or organisation, which is exactly what the Coalition Relic seeks to represent to a T, and a phylactery, at least in the terms that Dungeons and Dragons uses, is a magical object used to store the soul of a monster and protect it from death, which is a little bit like what the Sphinx Bone Wand, again, not a sex thing, is all about. Capturing the Sphinx's final cut- Sphinx's final- fuck me. <laughs> It doesn't do that at all! It's far too ridged! Don't put it up yet! No, I'm fine! Cut! 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 Similarly, let's examine Riptide Replicator. Here, we can see the midpoint of a Sliver's creation. But, we can also use this as an educational moment to teach the unwashed masses of idiot magic players like myself about the life cycle of butterflies. 
In both cases, you start with lava and end with a beautiful creature. But it's this middle state, this, this inactive form, which closely resembles the chrysalis or pupae stage of a butterfly's metamorphosis. As such, I think that this card ought to use the pupa counters as found on the card Cocoon. And this is how I think all children should be taught biology. Have you ever looked at a card and found yourself thinking, Oh dear, I'm trying to understand how to use this, but each time I try and read this card, I fall asleep halfway through. If only it used something other than charge counters so that I could know at a glance how this card works. Well, I've got the solution for you. Introducing Hit Counters, previously only seen on Etrata the Silencer. Now people who stay up late the world over can remember that Soraka Spellblade and Umezawa's Jitte are cards that you need to hit your opponents with in order to gain their benefits. Hit counters should not be used as a substitute for a healthy sleep schedule. Please consult a doctor if you're suffering from an inability to remain conscious during the day. Only through our collective emancipation from labor can we as a people find ample time to pursue healthy passions without sacrificing the free time we require to rest and recuperate. Join the union and help build a better world. Terms and conditions apply. There are a few other cards which obviously ought to have their charge counters replaced. Black Market would be the perfect fit for either bribery or coin counters. Uh, Eternity Vessel resets your life total, meaning that healing or eon counters would work amazingly there. Firemind's research should use study counters. What is research if not study? And Otherworld Atlas would be the perfect home to put page counters. I don't know why my face decided to collapse in on itself there. Or oh, why I'm now speaking like an old crone from a Worthy Kids animation. But it's been a long day. <laughs> What's the deal with Primal Amulet using charge counters when obviously it should use quest counters? I mean, you're on a quest to find the Primal Wellspring, aren't you? Step the Fuck up, wizards. Don't make me fly out to your headquarters to resolve these issues, preferably in some kind of paid video format that will increase my notoriety and personal clout. Don't, don't do, because I will. I would, I could, I could do it to, you have my email. You could, we could work something out. You know, if you force me to, please. Magistrate Scepter is another one of those cards that really does stick out to me. Like, what does the extra turn effect on this card actually represent? Like, is it a spell that's imbued within the Scepter itself? Or is it more of a kind of metaphorical buying of time by a governmental corruption? The charge counter aspect of this card doesn't tell us that, but if we were to replace that with Eon counters, time counters, bribery counters or corruption counters, we would have flavorful clarity to the effect of this card. Okay, transmogrifying wand. This one, I'm I'm so happy with it. I bet you're thinking, I bet you're thinking, oh, okay, so you're gonna change the charge counters for what, like knowledge counters or or lore counters, you know, because a, a wizard stores their their knowledge of, of this transmogrifying spell in their wand, right? In the wrong <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you have no idea, you have no idea how satisfying this decision has been for me. Look at this card. What does the transmogrifying wand do? Well, it turns a creature into an ox, right? Yeah. What's the most iconic part of an ox's body? Yes, that's right, the feet. And what, what do oxes have on their feet? Hooves. Transmogrifying Wand uses hoof print counters now. We did it, baby! We got there! We found a home for hoof print counters! Oh, oh my- Okay, so I must admit, we're gonna start getting into a, a little bit of shaky territory when it comes to some of my charge counter replacements. So, not unlike panicking during an Ikoria draft and exclusively picking up sudden spinnerets from every pack, every counter from this point out is gonna be a reach. On first blush, the charge counters on Blast Zone seem to make sense, right? I mean, if you add additional charges of dynamite onto a onto an explosion, it's, it's gonna be bigger, right? But that's not actually what this card does. Notice that only ever one specific mana value of permanence gets destroyed whenever this card detonates. 
What I think this card is mechanically trying to signify is that whatever is causing this explosion, firing this missile, is doing so in different areas of a city or at different levels of a building to take out highly specific targets. As such, I believe that aim counters convey this Ludo narrative far more accurately. <laughs> Door of Destinies only works if you're devoting your deck to one particular creature type, so devotion counters make a lot of sense there, and theft counters work perfectly on Relic, Amulet, and Throne of Mekindi. The Relic because it is literally a stolen artifact, and the Throne because only monarchs sit atop a throne. And what is monarchy if not the theft of a nation by aristocratic birthright? But we shouldn't be looking at this purely from a lore or flavour perspective. We've got to consider these cards as game pieces. Let's look at Everflowing Chalice, for example. Consider what you're actually doing when you turn this card sideways. You're pouring out the magical liquid that's contained within. But if this chalice truly is ever flowing, then that's a lot of arcane moisture that you've just put all over the floor. And what better way to represent that action than with flood counters? Next we have Geometric Nexus, and not unlike the risk of on-the-job injuries at Amazon warehouses increases each time they push a new sale on the market, the fractals that this card creates grows each time you cast a new instant or sorcery spell. So growth counters work there fine. Sigil of Distinction and Mace of the Valiant are two other unfortunate cards that have been tainted by the Virgin Charge counter. Lackluster, bland, dismal, why don't you close your eyes when we kiss anymore? The mechanics of these cards both suggest that their wielders are growing in skill, either as more mentors pass their way, or as they simply accrue more medals from glorious combat. As such, I feel that the Chad training or hone counters are a much snugger fit here. Brain in the Jar should absolutely use knowledge counters, and yes, this is still uh, me in in the shoot on the same day. Uh, lighting, lighting's just weird right now. Natural light does this kind of. Don't look at my hand. Finally, we have Elementalist's Palette, another new card from the Strixhaven Commander product, which really dates this fucking script. I think that this would be a perfect opportunity to reuse the manifestation counter that was so speculated about during Born of the Gods. Art being an object which attempts to exemplify, embody, or manifest complex emotions like love, life, and loss. Oh, and there we go. We have just fixed a huge host of cards in Magic the Gathering and giving them much more flavorful, much more thematic counters than they had before. Uh, now, you might notice that the list still contains quite a few names on it, and that's because the majority of the cards that are still on this list are cards that were featured in one of the six sets that were set on the plane of Mirrodin. Uh, now, Mirrodin uses charge counters not only in a thematic and flavorful capacity a lot of the time, but there's also a certain degree of mechanical significance that's given to charge counters, with cards specifically interacting with charge counters, taking them off of other cards, putting them onto cards, that kind of thing. Uh, as such, I think everything we've covered right now, that's all of the easy stuff. We can, we can just make a couple of changes there. Everything else here can keep a charge counter completely fine. Uh, and there, there we go. Bit of a short video uh, for y'all today. Sorry it took so long for me to make this. But uh, yeah, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. I've got a Patreon if you want to um, come and support me over there. Uh, smash that like button. And as always, stay s Uh, but but when has maintaining a little thing like uh, the integrity of Magic the Gathering's gameplay ever stopped a games designer before? Uh, let's let's fix a few more of these cards. Ooh, okay. 
okay, this is fine. There are some cards uh, in this list that we've already covered before, so we can just kind of blast past them. We've already we've already talked about the counters they're going to have, like Baton of Courage, uh, Mirrodin's Core, Sun Droplet, uh, Clearwater Goblet, uh, and Titan Forge. But there are cards like Surge Node, which I think require two different kinds of counters. Like, right now, it starts with charge counters and then just moves them about. I mean, sure, it's it's elegant, but fuck that! Surge Node starting with storage counters, I think, makes a lot of sense. After all, this is some kind of sci-fi portable charger of some description, right? But then moving storage counters? Now nah, it's just not, not really gelling for me. I think we need to invoke what portable chargers actually do. They, they allow you to use your electronic devices for even more time. Ah, which is why Surge Node will put our counters on permanence now. It makes so much sense for us to do that. Now, not every card needs a kind of like in-depth explanation for the counters that it's going to get now. So let's do a little bit of a charge counter reorganization speed run. Golden Urn, gold counters now. Chimeric Mass and Golem Factory, they, you know, fuse materials together. So fuse counters make sense there. Uh, same with Dismantle, actually, with sort of like the Ludo narrative of what happens after you destroy an artifact with it. Talon of Pain, Pain counters. Tumble Magnet, Magnet counters. Jinxed Collar, Ironic Luck counters. Opaline Braces and Gemstone Array, well, gem counters there. Banshee's Blade and Shriek Horn should obviously use screen counters. Uh, Sphere of the Sun removes counters to produce mana, not unlike how the sun shines through the darkness to produce light. So we can give that Night counters now. Chimeric Egg should obviously use Hatchling counters. Uh, Culling Dias, Altar of Shadows, and Spawning Pit. All of them involve some kind of horrifying sacrifice, so blood or corpse counters would fit there perfectly. Finding out that the homophobic and transphobic pseudoscientific abuse that is conversion therapy is still legal here in the UK in 2021 filled me with despair. Which is why Conversion Chamber can now use Despair Counters. And finally, what is a Spyglass, arcane or otherwise, if not an eye stalk made by man? Now, I know what you must be thinking. You must be thinking, Spice, you delicious slice of Welsh cake. How come it takes you so long to produce a fucking video? Also, like loads of the cards that you've just gone through, don't just use charge counters, they use the sunburst mechanic. Uh, the sunburst mechanic specifically calls for charge counters to be used. If you want to do all of this crazy funky stuff that you're, you're, you're suggesting, you'd have to change the whole mechanic. Space Cowboy, you gonna do that? And to that I'd say, first off, I make videos whenever I want to make them and they take as long as they take and each time you ask me where my new content is, I purposefully take the rest of the day off. I'd also say that, wait a, wait a second, num nuts. Sunburst already uses multiple kinds of counters. Like, yes, non-creature artifacts come into play with charge counters, but creature artifacts, they come into play with plus one, plus one counters. There's already a precedent to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm st I'm working within the box. I'm trapped in the box. Help me, help me. Help me get out! As such, a card like Pentad Prism can absolutely enter the battlefield with crystal counters rather than charge counters. Now, why crystal counters, you might ask? Well, magic also has a precedent for using specific kinds of counters as fun references to previous cards. So obviously, Pentad Prism should become a retroactive reference to magic's other famous Prism card. Prism Array. You know, that card. There are only a few Sunburst cards left, like Infused Arrowheads, which wrongfully use charge counters. Ugh, uninspired, droll. I used to hear music when I held you. Now you barely hold my gaze over dinner. Instead, it should absolutely use the far more exciting and fun 
arrowhead counters only seen in the Homelands expansion up until this point. And finally, Heliophile. I have no idea what this card is supposed to be. Literally, literally none. I, I'm assuming it's some kind of bomb or missile. Uh, and in, in this case, actually, it would be really useful to have something other than charge counters so I can bloody understand what I'm supposed to be looking at. So I'm thinking if it is like, I don't know, some kind of mortar thing, then I'm going to just slap shell on it and, and, and piss off down to the pub. England's playing... It's coming home. Oh, let's... Oh, oh, she let you out, did she? Old oh, ball and chain, here comes trouble. I have not left the house in weeks. Now, we have a few Mirrodin cards that we've yet to recategorize, so let's just jump on into them, starting with Ratchet Bomb and Grind Clock. Now, both of these cards require, as Ratchet Bomb's name suggests, some kind of ratcheting in order for them to function. So they could become the home of the Crank Counter that we'd only seen up until this point in the Unstable set. However, if you don't want to be silly, and let's be real, whoever wants to be silly, a week after you died, a package with your name on it came, and inside was a gift for- Then they could just as easily become the home of the wind counters of Magic the Gathering, which, for some reason, have only ever appeared on wind-related cards up until this point. Serum Tank, on top of being the most Pokemon-looking card in the entire Magic the Gathering, would be the perfect home to host Elixir counters, as would Aether Vial. I was thinking about giving that card Elixir Counters as well, but I think at this point in the game, that's just, that's just playing it on easy mode. I want you to think about what Aether Vial does as a card. Nay, what Aether Vial makes you feel as a card. Close your eyes. Picture- BOO! Sorry, that was really mean. That was so mean! <laughs> Close your eyes. Picture your first time back at a magic fest in the in the after times and you're sitting down you're playing modern for the first time in months years even and your opponent plays island tap aether vial what does that what does that invoke in you what does that make you feel like 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 when the, when the counters get added when the, when the number racks up when you know bigger and bigger merfolk are just going to come barreling down your asshole what do you feel that's right you feel a sense of foreboding because of your inevitable doom and death as such i think any of those three counters would be a perfect fit for this card Shooting on a different day now, because uh, after that last shot, our, our garden side neighbour apparently decided to take up metalworking from the hours of 5pm to 9pm. Ah! Gremlin Mine was a bit of a tricky one to recategorize. Like, I could have just taken the word charge off of this card and called it a day, but I think that would have made it far too mechanically powerful, and also just not at all flavorful. So I got to thinking, what do explosions damage? Armor, yes, of course. And what's a fantasy version of armor or, or a fantasy item closely associated with it? Shields, yes. So finally, Magic the Gathering players have a hard counter to palliation accord. The one card in the game that uses shield counters. You can thank me in the comments. Now, you might be wondering, what about the two artifact cycles from Mirrodin Besieged block that use charge counters? Obviously, you need one universal counter to go across both of them. What are you going to do about that? And... <laughs> oh, you you really cracked me up. You, you, you know, you're some... Purple Monkey, get in here. Did you just hear what the audience asked, Purple Monkey? That's right, they asked what kind of single universal counter we're going to use across both cycles of cards. <laughs> we're not going to use one kind of counter, you fucking idiot! 
time. Like I said, we don't need to use one single counter within a cycle of cards. Purple Monkey's dead, okay? That's why he's not in the shot anymore. I killed him. There's already a precedent within Magic for cycles of artifacts to use different kinds of counters. Like, Bloodletter Quill uses blood counters, whereas Plague Boiler uses plague counters. So with that flimsy excuse in mind, let's blast through these two cycles of artifacts. Trigon of Corruption. We just talked about it. Corruption. Counter. Uh, Trigon of Knowledge. Knowledge counter. Trigon of Mending. Healing counter. Trigon of... Uh, infestation, Hatchling counter, and then Trigon of Rage, Strife counter. D bam! Boom! Slap me and call me Senor Bandito de la Hobgoblin. Shrine of Boundless Growth, Growth counters. Uh, Shrine of Loyal Legions, Loyalty counters. We can't have Planeswalkers having all the fun. Shrine of Burning Rage, Flame counter. Shrine of Piercing Visions, eyeball counters, and then Shrine of Limitless Power, I thought we could let it keep its charge counters. You know, charge is a little bit like power, the, the charge of your phone, the, the charge of your laptop. This can be a perfectly fine place to just let charge counters be and relax. Psych! I got you! We're not doing that! Shrine of Limitless Power, it's using plus two plus O oh counters now! Yeah, that's right! What better way than showing an increase in power than with the counter that has the most power on it? Ooh! Have we got time to do an ad read? Ah! You may remember from my last video that I'd partnered up with Mythic Frames and Titus Lunter to create a series of alt sleeves for a Kickstarter. These are protective and decorative sleeves which give your decks new, custom borders while still shielding them from harm and Gatorade spills, as any good double sleeve should. Well, the Kickstarter succeeded by almost three times its goal, with Titus and my sleeves being greenlit along with the rest of the sleeves in the series. If you missed out on the Kickstarter itself, not to worry, the sleeves are currently in their pre-order stage, so if you'd like to pick up either Titus and Mines or any of the other wonderful sleeves on display, uh, personally I'm a massive fan of this gangster Krenko, look just look at his face love that uh, then head on over to mythicgaming.com forward slash campaign to pick up your favorites today anyway back to this needlessly long video which is really putting all of those i'd watch you talk about anything comments to the test and finally our final charge counter card from mirrodin is the delkin Infuser. Now, we can assume it's this Videlkin's job to, as its flavour text suggests, awaken the dreams and, and plans of artefacts, uh, which sounds very high and mighty, but realistically isn't that different to a normal human mechanic where they fix or build a car's engine, you know, creating a product through their labour. Now, the way that this works under capitalism is that rather this than a worker's labour power being workers are paid less than the value they create, meaning that they can never buy back the products, products that they have produced, they forms stand one of the in foundation to of capitalism. The share of profit does, increases but because in the same they are not producing the share of the labour in stability falls, and creates and vice this overproduction. A frisky bison is a sweet and sour fruity down this served in a martini glass. Its basis is vodka it's not over consumption. And it's overproduction. Mum, if you're not going to read the theory, I'm not going to come over capital. for Sunday it's lunch. It's absolutely essential Jesus. reading for you to pick up Lenin's imperialism and Walter Rodney's How Europe Underdeveloped Africa to better understand imperialism both in countries that are affected by it, but also in countries that benefit from it. Anyway, that's why Videlkin Infuser puts wage counters on artifacts now. Whew, and there we go. That is the end of the video. We have almost entirely eradicated charge counters from the game Magic the Gathering. Uh, the only cards that are left are also perfectly mechanically and flavorfully apt for the charge counter. Uh, we have lightning themed cards, explosive themed cards. We even have the original mana battery cycle, and in their much more diminished state, the charge counter additionally has an infinitely more coherent and pungent narrative and flavorful 
identity. Uh, so yeah, that is the end of the video. Uh, Patreon credits will probably start rolling up the screen in a little bit. Uh, again, I do have a Patreon. Uh, my dog actually needs life-saving leg replacement surgery. Um, we're, we're giving we're giving him human legs. He, he loves to run. Uh, so yeah, if you'd want to support the cause, link in the description. Um, punch that subscribe button. Elbow drop the like. And as always, stay sp... Uh, but but well, we've come this far let's let's not let's not stop now we can fix the last few of these charge charge counter cards so help me god i mean cube counters have only ever appeared on one card from fallen empires so it's high time that they appear on another card like blue mana battery i mean just get a load of them cubes. As for the rest of the mana battery cycle, I mean, the horn on red looks pretty sharp, so we can definitely put point counters there. Uh, black mana battery appears to be powered by a decaying skull, so death counters work there perfectly. Uh, white mana battery looks like we'd have to dig it out of that mountain which it's in, so obviously it should now use mining counters, and green mana battery, uh, sure is spitting out a lot of sparks, so we can use spark counters for that one. Uh, same with lightning coils. Two birds with one help me. Lightning Reaver uh, brings you closer to death each time it hits you, which makes you kind of like its prey, so, so that counter can work there. Uh, Dark Steel Reactor looks a little bit like a vortex, uh, which is which is a real counter. It exists in Arata. You know when you go into an old person's home and your clothes kind of retain the scent of the place long after you leave? Well, that's why Power Conduit now puts age counters on artifacts. I mean, this lightning is going straight through this crusty old bastard skull. Of course it's gonna be a bit musty after that. Ion Storm and Lightning Storm are both storms, so obviously uh, wind counters would work perfectly on those cards. And I know I said, I know I said they, they were wind counters before, but you know what? Um, Graham, if that's your real name, I'm the writer of this video, and you are but someone watching me. So, this next one is easy though. Engineered explosives uh, would be the perfect fit for a volatile counter, which uh, which don't technically exist uh, in the game, but they were planned to be put into Aether Revolt, and they do exist on this one web page of the Magic the Gathering mothership, and and you know what? That that's good enough for this old cowboy. Oh, rest of my old every bones over here. Oh. Energy chamber, a another no-brainer. I mean, just look at the artifact leaving it, all ethereal and pale and tormented. Evidently, a ghost form counter ought to be placed on artifacts that are affected by it rather than a charge counter. Next up, we have Core Tapper and, um... Uh... Uh, what, uh, what, what is he tapping? That's right, himself. He's, t he's tapping himself. And what is the, what is the most commonly tapped part of, of your body when, when you're, when you're tapping? That, that's right, it's your foot. Uh, and why do you tap your feet? It's not, it's not because you're impatient. Get that, get that idiot idea out of your brain. It's because you're listening to some grooving tunes. Yeah, yeah, and Core Tapper puts counters on other things, and much like the infectious nature of such a tune passing from, from creature to creature, they also start tapping their feet, which is why Core Tapper now puts music counters on other cards. And you can't stop me. And finally, our final card that still contains the despicable charge counter menace, and that is Empowered Auto Generator. Uh, oh, this one's easy. Um, obviously, should use eyeball counters because it's, it's a bit like, 
It's an eye. It's a ball, and it it goes in different direct. No, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, it uses a cube counters because a sphere is a bit like a. Then no, that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. Um, uh, fate counters could go no. A ghost for spark counters its energy that doesn't uh, i bought said that um it's this this card obviously should use i can't do it i, I can't do it anymore ha <laughs> Hello? Hey, Spice. It's Max from Max Makes Magic here. Uh, how are we doing on the whole deconstructing MTG's counters thing? I, I can't do it, Max. I'm sorry. I got as far as Everflowing Chalice before I was just taking the piss. Wait, so there are still cards with charge counters on them? Only one. Only one card's left. I swear, I haven't bullshitted this hard since GCSE English. Cut me a break. I'm very disappointed in you, Spice. You know I have to bring them into this. Please, no, I, I swear I'll keep the plug to your video right at the start rather than cutting it for time like I was planning. It's too late. They're on the line. Rich mortal contacts me, the Ozolith, mystical confluence of all the multiverse's counters. Oh, hi, hi, the uh, Ozolith. Is that the voice of the one they call Spicy Boy? Uh, spice Rack. The puny flesh creature named Max has told me of your skills. How goes the quest to shatter all of magic's charge counters? Oh, yeah. yeah, about that, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Mrs. Uh, the Ozolith? Please, call me Oz. Oh, really? No. Oh, got all the way up to Empowered Auto Generator and conked it. One card! But there was only one card left that I couldn't recategorize. Silence! Silence! If I could feel emotion, I would be most disappointed in you, Spice Man. Again, Spice Rack. Irrelevant. Both I and the forces of New Phyrexia were adamant that only the utter fragmentation of charge counters would lead to the final blow against Merit resistance to completion. It's true. I've got Jingitak just breathing down my neck to get this done. He's got a very long mouth, so it goes all the way down. Wait. Hang on, is Phyrexians working with the Ozolith really the next Magic the Gathering storyline? Probably not. But we're going to look like bloody geniuses if we call it this early. God, I have no idea how I've ended up in this situation. You didn't. What? This is naught but a mental apparition, a synthesis brought about through the thesis of overwork and antithesis of stagnating monetary returns. That's right. None of this is real. Son. Dad! Did you remember to go to your maths exam? No, Papa! I got lost in the woods! Son, I'm so disappointed in you. Papa! I'm so disappointed in you, son. Papa! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. oh, I really need to find different ways of ending these videos. You could always try doing musical numbers again. Oh, you're so right, babe. Wait, what? Jesus Christ! It is a lovely sunny day outside and I am lying in my bedroom filming the Patreon credits for my uh, for my video. Thank you so much to all of my lovely patrons who make this my full-time job. That's really, really cool. Uh, this is officially now where the magic happens. Um, hoi 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 hoi. Uh, but a special thank you to my $10 patrons uh, who include... One, two, three, four, I declare a class war. Seventh guest, a fool of five colours, a gay American couple, a socialist hobgoblin, Akumi the Reaper, Adam Gable, Addy DC, AJ Ingram, Alex Berman, Alex Flynn, Alex Wood, Alice Perales, an alt-right sleeper agent who gives money to communist Booker Eidecker and then in parentheses probably to books for Sona close parentheses, an Umbreon pastry, Atticus Von Schwal, hope I get that right, that's a new one. Bambi Ward, Basu Gasu Baku Hatsu Baku Matsu, Ben Pike, 
Biscuit Blade, Blake Evers, Bradley Rose, Brian Dunn, Cab, Kalulu, Chase Beard, Chad X, Charles Kustera Gurat. I hope, yep, I hope I get that one right. Krista Voss, Serso Serasa, Cloud Chaser Kestrel, Cognitive Glitch, Conflicted Psyches, Corwin, Dan Veloni, Deadpan Goff, Drew Pierce, Dystopico, Exidian, Eldritch Changeling, Alfonsi, Erica Hamel, Ethan Abraham, Faxel, Felix Morton, Future Beagle, Grey Days, Hand It Over, That Thing, Your Dog Pictures, Handsome Phil, <laughs> Hope Wilkes, Hypercube MTG, I am saying this only because our global economic system does not intrinsically support artistic expression. I want Emrakul to dominate me. In response, I bolt myself. Jake Colburn, Jessica Settle, Joe Benson, Johnny Rifle, Joshua M. Stephan, Julie Bunn, Julius Home, just mild lilac. Carlia Whithart, Kate B. Ho Ku Ho Zombie. Sorry if I get that wrong. Kurd Ape Apologizer, Lacrem1234, Leliana, Lily of the North Star, literally a ghost that pushes over candles, Linnea, Madame Monroe, Magic Arcanum, Max Cooper, Mike Mavramatis, Morrigan T. Robbins, Mr. Skolaton, M. Ben, Okami, Omar Alviberi, Oops Orsini, Penta Mantra, Peter Carter, Phoenix Swans, Puck, Ray For You, Riddle of Lightning, Romeo Joe, Rowan Brown, S, Singularity But The Eyes Are One, Sage Morrison, Samuel Kona, Sean Caius O'Reilly, Several Goblins in a Trench Coat, Sir Seanzy, Sky Johnson, Swan Hunter, Taylor Street, The Coconut Crab Goddess, love that for you, The Ghost of Karl Marx in 4D, The Wealth of Those Societies in Which the Capitalist Mode of Production Prevails presents itself as, quote, an immense accumulation of, and then Patron cut you off because your username can't be that long, Felon, The Reaper of You, Totally a Spy, Travis K, Trey Ernst, Trey Parker, Unturb Upkeep Lose, <laughs> that's great, Venza, Vladimir Gorbachev, Voice of All, Wesley, That Smart Communist, Wicked Haiku, Xenon, Zadas, Ludo Narrative Dissonance, and Xanoron. And a massive thank you to all of my other patrons, massive thank you to you for watching, for everyone who supports me, follows me on Twitter, gives me, gives me a little kiss on the forehead. Uh, that's a very small amount of people, but thank you very much for that anyway. And as always, stay spicy. Son. I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> Boyfriend, that's my dad. That's my dad right there. I love that guy. Love that. Get in here. Get in here, you knucklehead. I love this guy. Love this guy. Get out of here. <laughs>